I'm here in Goldsby. The sun's out, that's a good sign. Uh, Goldsby is a small village on the northeast coast of Scotland in Sutherland. Population about 2,000 people. But it's on the NC500, so it does get busy with tourists coming through it. It sits on the shore of the North Sea on the Moray Firth, and the big hill behind me you can see is Ben Braggy. Although the BH is pronounced V in Scottish Gaelic, so I suppose it should be Ben Braggy. Now, if you look right at the top of the hill, you can see the Duke of Sutherland monument. It's about a mile away from me here as the crow flies, but you can see it's quite steep and I can't fly. I'm gonna take the shortest route up, which is just over a mile, and that should take me about an hour, hopefully, fingers crossed. And then if the weather stays like this, I'm gonna come back on the longer, steadier decline route around the other side. There isn't just one trail up and down, there's actually several that go around and up and down the hill. The one I'm taking is the shortest route up, but I'm going to be coming down the longer way, which is about just over two miles long, and it's a gradual incline or decline if you're coming back. But there's also the Highland Wildcat Trails. These are a series of mountain bike trails, and one of them is the longest free ride downhill or descent at seven kilometres long, where you can just free wheel all the way down seven kilometres that's mad and they have several uh, paths that go up and down and the snake around the hill and uh, they're of different levels so it depends how good and confident you are on a mountain bike some of them can be a little bit hairy though It might be the shortest route to the top, but climbing 1,300 feet in just over a mile and a half averages out at about a 16% incline. Once you factor in the rocky steps and the 25 kilos of filming equipment and the sun beating down on me, even at this time of the morning, it does soon start to take its toll, although the views behind me are just spectacular. I'm about three quarters of the way up, hence I'm looking a little bit Whew. Yeah, feeling that as well. Uh, about 20 minutes left to climb. The views from here are amazing. You can see all down Ben Braggy, across Goldsby and out towards the sea. And, and, and we've still got a little bit more to climb, so I can't wait for the views from the top. It's strange to describe, but after climbing up that steep rocky path for the last mile and a half, I really should feel exhausted. But seeing the summit ahead of me with that blue sky and this huge monument just waiting for me at the top, it's like my body's ignoring how tired my legs are and it's just carrying me this final few hundred feet to the top where the views are just breathtaking. And here he is, George Granville Leveson Gower, the first Duke of Sutherland, or the wee manny as he's known locally, if you ask anybody. Although he's not that wee, is he? Yeah, 24 feet tall he stands on top of this 76 foot tall plinth. So 100 feet high altogether. It was erected in 1837, which was four years after he died. And he died at Dunrobin Castle, which was the home to Earl, Dukes and Clan Sutherland for over 600 years. Now the stone to build the plinth was actually quarried here from Ben Braggy, only about 50 yards from where it's standing now. And if you look a little closer around the bottom of the plinth, you can see this wire meshing. What's that for? Well, that's a sign of a darker side to the story of the Manny. Back in 1785, the Countess of Sutherland married the millionaire George Leveson Gower, making him the first Duke of Sutherland. 
Now they owned over a million acres of land across Sutherland, making it the biggest private estate in the whole of Europe. And at the time, it was mostly occupied by scattered families who were tenant farmers. The pair decided to clear the land of the tenanted farmers and use it for sheep farming, which was massively more profitable than the rents they were getting from the tenanted farmers. Now over 15,000 people were cleared from the land and resettled. Some of them went to purpose-made villages like Helmsdale where they would fish for a living or set up little coastal crofts. Not everybody was happy to be resettled though and some of the people that were cleared used the opportunity to emigrate and they went to places like America and New Zealand or other places in the British Empire at the time to start a new life. The shocking thing was how the families were evicted from the homes. It said that a lot didn't want to leave, they'd been there for generations, they didn't want to move or be resettled somewhere else. But the Duke allegedly hired people to shift them and some of the tactics were a little bit shocking. Houses were set on fire while people were still in them. And it's even rumored that people died. One of the men that the Duke hired called Patrick Seller was even taken to court in Inverness on charges of arson and homicide. He was found not guilty, but weirdly his tactics worked because he ended up renting a huge area of the land that had been cleared and setting up his own sheep farm and made quite a fortune from it. But there is a different argument the Duke of Sutherland himself always thought he was doing these people a favour. The Industrial Revolution was storming ahead in the rest of Britain and he thought the Highlands were being left behind. These sheep farmers weren't moving with the times and the Duke had made a lot of money so he thought he knew what he was talking about. He thought he was doing them a favour by moving them from the conditions they were living in out in the Highlands to these new villages. He thought it was the way forward. Whichever version of events you choose to believe, there's little to celebrate in the way that the people were evicted from the homes. There's been calls over the years for the Duke to be removed from the tower and replaced with a Celtic cross or a plaque for the families that were moved out of the home so horrifically back in the day. Some people want to go further. They actually want the Duke to be pulled down from the plinth, smashed into pieces and scattered amongst the heather so that the families can walk over him the same way that he walked over them. Remember, I showed you the metal grill around the bottom of the plinth. That's because some people have even gone as far as to try and topple the statue themselves, pulling the sandstone rock away from the plinth to try and topple the whole thing. You can see the stones scattered around the bottom of the monument where people have literally tried to pull it apart. As much as there's a lot of people who'd love to see the statue removed behind me, there's also a lot of people who would like to see him remain and be remembered not for the legend that he thinks he was. <laughs> but imagine the amount of people that drive up and down the A9 every year, that see the statue and read up about the history of why he's there. Now, isn't it important to remember history and learn from it, rather than just compound the wrongs and come and vandalize the statue? I've absolutely loved it up here. It's quite a trek if you're coming up the steep way right up the front, but it is the shortest way and it's well worth it if you're fit enough. The views are spectacular. I can see as far as Helmsdale, up towards the north. I can see uh, around where Brora is and down into Golsby. And then you've got Loch Fleet just behind me, uh, which we've seen before. Uh, the beaches towards Embo and then over towards Dornoch and Tain. And then across the Firth, I can see Tarbert Ness Lighthouse, uh, which is not usually visible on a day like today, but I can see that. The views are just unbelievable, as is this thing. But I've got to go now. I'm not going down the way I came, I'm going around the longer way, which is about two and a little bit miles. Are you ready?
and I'm back, back at Jeep. <laughs> so it was a little bit longer coming back than I expected than it looked on the maps. Uh, it looked about two and a half miles from what I could tell, but it actually it's nearly three and a half miles. But the, the incline, the, the uh, decline, sorry, is a lot easier. So it's better on the knees, uh, but it still took me an hour and a half to get back. Uh, it took me just over an hour to get up. That was the short route, which uh, it was actually just over a mile and a half going up. That is hard work. If you're gonna do it, and your knees are not good or you're not that fit, I would recommend going the gradual way up. It does take a little bit longer, uh, but it is easier on the knees. Uh, right, bag in the Jeep. Uh, time to go home and get some lunch. Do you like his t-shirt? It's part of our new range. We've got like chickens and bees and stuff. Yeah. Uh, seeing as we're not boating anymore, so it's all like chickens and bees, and I nearly said peas then. We ain't got any with peas on yet. <laughs> uh, but there's a link in video description if you want to see our new merch store. There's all sorts of new merch in there. Some lovely stuff. Treat yourself for Christmas or my birthday. Yes, this is birthday next week. It's my birthday on Monday, isn't it? That's too, don't buy me any of this though. We've got a, we've got a cupboard full we've of this. We've got plenty of this. <laughs> you get me some off my Amazon wish list if you want. Oh, that'd be nice. New drone or something. <laughs> You've just got one. That's in the video description as well. Uh, if you're thinking about doing Ben Braggy, Ben Vraggy, whatever you want to call it, and uh, the, not the Duke of Westminster, Duke, uh, of, Duke of Sutherland, uh, what? Uh, get it researched and go, but only do it if you're fit. Oh yeah, that's why I didn't go. You can't do it if you've got knees like Sean, because no. my knees are like Sean's knees now for a couple of days. <laughs> you should have seen me when I walked in, it's like I'd weed myself, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Did me. Oh, walking in. What, no, I am. I am. <laughs> <sighs> right, let's leave it there. We hope you've liked this vlog. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Hit the thumbs up button. And if you hit the notifications bell, YouTube will let you know every time we release a new video, which, uh, if you don't already know, is... Friday, four o'clock. Uh, if you want to support... And if you don't realise... <laughs> if you want to support the channel... He nearly swore then. If you want to support the channel, there's a link up above his head if you're watching on a smartphone or tablet. Uh, down in the video description on the computer, you behave yourself. I'm going to take him in and get him some on toast before you start misbehaving. We'll see you next week. Ta-ra! Ta-ra! It's already recording. They're all going to think we're having a threesome with Gorgeous George. No, not like that. Tell them what happened last time with carpet burns. <laughs> Don't really like men who put themselves on a pedestal. Do you no, get it? I get that, yeah, I get it, yeah. <laughs> she done. <laughs> <laughs>